This is lesson 31. I will add mixed numbers. So in lesson 30, we learned to add a mixed number and a fraction. So in the last lesson, we were adding numbers like this. This would be a mixed number. And we were learning to add this to a fraction. Well, today we're going to talk about what it looks like when you add a mixed number plus a mixed number. Okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and use our journals today. There won't be a whole lot in our journals. We're actually just going to put one problem, but I do want you to go ahead and get that out. Write today's date, and I want you to write add mixed numbers. The reason why I have you do some things in your journals is because I think it's a nice place to have a reference. You can always go back and look at what this looks like after you've already cleaned out your binder and already thrown away all the papers that were in your math binder. You will still have that journal that has some examples in it. All right, so in your math journal, I want you to go ahead and write this example of a mixed number plus a mixed number. So if you look at this mixed number plus a mixed number, and you think to yourself of these as unit forms, you would think to yourself, okay, I have two ones, one eighth plus one one and five eighths. So when you add, you have to add like units, which means you have to add whole numbers to whole numbers and fractions to fractions. So when you're adding this, you would say, okay, well, 2 plus 1 plus 1 eighth plus 5 eighths. I want you to go ahead and write that down in your math journal. And I want you to notice all I did was I say, okay, I'm going to add the whole number and the whole number, and then I'm going to add the fraction and the fraction. So when I add whole number to whole number, I get 3. And when I add fraction to fraction, I get 6 eighths. Now you'll notice I did not end up with an improper fraction, so it's okay to just leave this 3 and 6 eighths. I will tell you that in today's lesson, we will end up with some numbers that do have improper fractions, and we're going to have to correct them so that we have proper fractions, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get out your problem set for today. In your math journal, I want you to go ahead and write your name, please, and let's take a look at what we have here. So you can see in the example, they pretty much did the same thing that we did in our journals. They separated the whole number from the fraction and the whole number from the fraction, and then they added the whole numbers and they added the fraction. And we're going to go ahead and finish this. So you can see 5 plus 3 thirds would be the same thing as 5 plus 1, so this would end up being 6. All right, let's take a look at B. All right, so we've got 4 and 1 fourth plus 3 and 2 fourths. I'm not going to separate the way that they did up here. I don't think we need to do all that. If you feel like it helps you to be able to understand, go ahead. But I think I can look at this and just say 4 plus 3 is 7, and 1 fourth plus 2 fourths is 3 fourths. So I'm not going to use the number bonds. I don't really feel like that's going to help me here. All right, so now on C, I'm going to add 2 plus 6, which is 8. And then I have two sixes plus four sixes, which gives me six sixes. Now I'm not going to leave this this way because six sixes is equal to one whole. So I have eight plus one, which is equal to nine. All right, moving right along. So now in this next part, we're going to have some that are going to end up being an improper fraction. You can see right here in number in A what they've done here. They added the whole numbers, two and one, they got three. But when they add the fractions, they got four fifths plus two fifths, which was six fifths, which is an improper fraction. So they went ahead and used the number bond, and they divided this into a whole number and what was left over. So they want us to use a number line to show our work. Now, when we use a number line, we don't have to use a number line to show us this. We're actually just using the number line to show this. So we're going to start right here at three, and we're going to see what happens when you take three and you add five fifths. So you can see they've divided this into five parts, one, two, three, four, five. So when I go here and I add five fifths, it looks like this, it gets me to four, and then I'm going to add one more fifth, and that's going to get me to four and one fifth. So the answer is four and one fifth. Okay? All right, so let's try B. So we're going to start by adding the whole numbers. One plus three is four. And then we're going to add our fraction, 3 fourths plus 3 fourths, which equals 6 fourths. So you can see we have an improper fraction, so we're going to use a number bond here to separate this into a whole and what's left over. So if I'm looking at fourths, how many fourths does it take to make a whole? Well, it takes four fourths. 
and what would be left over? Two-fourths. Okay, so let's see if we can show this on a number line. Okay, so I really only need to go from four to six, I think. I'll just go from four to six. And the reason why I know I'm going to have to go to four to six is because this is an improper fraction, so I can already see it's going to be greater than five. And these are fourths, so I'm going to divide these into four parts like this. Okay, so I'm starting at 4, and I'm going to add 4 fourths. So when I add 4 fourths, that's going to take me to 5. So plus 4 fourths, and then I'm going to add 2 more fourths. So I'm going to end up at 5 and 2 fourths. So when I take 4 and I add 1, that's 5 and 2 fourths. Okay? Hopefully this strategy is making sense to you. Let's try one more. All right, so we're going to add whole numbers. 3 plus 2 is 5, and then I'm going to add fractions. 3 eighths plus 6 eighths is 9 eighths. So again, I have an improper fraction, which is going to be 8 eighths and 1 eighth, because it takes 8 out of 8 to make a whole, and then I'm going to have 1 eighth left over. So let's draw our number line here again. All right, so I'm starting at 5, so I know I'm going to have to go to 5, and then I know I'm going to go past 6, because I have more than one hole in the fraction. So I'm going to have to go from 5 to 7. And I'm going to divide these into eighths. So I'm going to start by dividing these into fourths. And then if I have fourths, if I divide those in half, that makes 8. So let's do fourths. And then divide our fourths in half so we'll have eighths again. All right, so I'm starting at 5, and I'm adding 8 eighths. So when I add 8 eighths, that's like adding a hole. So it's going to put me at 6. And then I've got one more eighth, so I'm going to end up at six and one eighth. So five and nine eighths is the same as six and one eighth. Okay, now it says solve, use the arrow way to show how to make one. Okay, so we started using that arrow strategy in the last, in the last lesson. So let's see how we can apply that same strategy to adding mixed numbers. So let's look at the example. They went ahead and added the whole numbers. One, two plus one is three. But you'll notice they did not add the fractions. Instead, they took five sixes and they divided it into two sixes and three sixes. The reason why they divided it this way is because look at what happens when you put these two fractions together. When you put four sixes with two sixes, it gives you six sixes. So that's how you do the arrow way. So let's see what that looks like with an arrow. Oops, I'm drawing a number line. Okay, so you're going to start at three and four sixes. Okay, so I'm starting here at three and four sixes. And I want to know what it takes to get me to four. So this is where I'm going to take this part of five sixes, and I'm going to add it to two, to four, or excuse me, to four six. 3 and 4, 6 plus 2, 6 gets me to 4. Then I'm going to add what's left over, which is 3, 6s, and that gets me 4 and 3, 6s. Okay? This seems complicated, but it's not, so stay with me here. So we're going to start by adding just the whole numbers. So 1 plus 3 is 4, and I still have 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. So all I did was add the whole numbers but I did not do anything to the fraction. So I've got 4 and 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. So I start at 4 and 3 fourths, and I'm trying to get to the next whole number, which would be 5. What would I have to add to 4 and 3 fourths to get to 5? Well, I'm trying to get 4 fourths, so that means I'd have to add 1 fourth. So here's where your number bond comes into play. This is how I'm going to decompose 3 fourths. I'm going to decompose it into 1 fourth because I want to add it to this to get to 5, and then what's left over is 2 fourths. So that's what I'm going to add to 5. And it gets me to 5 and 2 fourths. Okay? All right, let's try one more. So we're going to add the whole numbers. 3 plus 2 is 5, and then I'm going to not add my fractions. Okay, so I'm going to start at 5 and 3 eighths, and I want to know what it's going to take me to get to 6. Well, I'm trying to get to 8 eighths, so I would have to add 
5 eighths. So that's how I'm going to decompose 6 eighths. I'm going to decompose it into 5 eighths and then whatever's left over, which is 1 eighth. So that's what I add to my whole number. And I end up with 6 and 1 eighth. Okay? I kind of like the arrow strategy. I think it's fun. Now it says solve. Use whichever method you prefer. So because it says use whichever method you prefer, I'm not going to choose your method for you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to alternate between methods, and I want you to be thinking as we use these two methods, the arrow way and the other method that we're going to use is the one that we did first here, where we um, decompose the whole like we did with the number line, and I want you to think about which method makes the most sense to you, and that's the method that I want you to use, and let's just see if we get the same answers, okay? I'm going to start with the number line way, okay? So I'm going to add together whole numbers, which gets me 4, and I'm going to add together fractions, which gets me 7 fifths. All right, now let's take a look at what that would look like on a number line. I've got 4, 5, and 6, and I'm going to divide these into 5 parts because I'm talking about fifths. Okay, so I'm going to divide this into a whole and what's left over. Okay, so if I start at 4 and I add 5 fifths, that gets me to 5. And then I'm going to add 2 fifths. So the answer is 5 and 2 fifths. I almost think I could use this strategy without the number line. I think I can just use this number bond to be able to get to here without drawing that number line. I don't know about you. You may still need the number line. You'll have to decide that for yourself. Okay, so this time I'm going to use the arrow strategy. Okay, so remember, you're picking the one that you like best. All right, so I'm going to start by adding whole numbers. 2 plus 3 is 5, but I'm not going to add the fractions. I'm going to leave the fractions as is. So I start at 5 and 6 eighths, and I'm trying to get to the next whole number, which is 6. So to get to 8 eighths, I'm going to have to add... 2 eighths. So that's how I decompose 7 eighths into 2 eighths and whatever's left over, which would be 5 eighths. So now I'm going to add the rest of 7 eighths. I've already added 2 eighths. Now I'm going to add 5 eighths and I get 6 and 5 eighths. Okay, there's one more problem. I want you to pause the video <clears throat> and I want you to try to use the method that you prefer. I'm going to do both strategies. You do not have to do both strategies. I want you to pause the video and pick which strategy you like best, and that's the one that I want you to try. Okay, you do not have to write both strategies on your paper, but listen, because I am going to write both on my paper. Okay, so pause the video, do as much as you can, and then come back. All right, I'm going to begin by using the original strategy that we used, where you add both whole numbers and both fractions. So that would give me 5 and 15 twelfths. Now I told you before that I think I can do this strategy without the number line so I'm not going to do the number line. I'm just going to decompose this into a whole and whatever's left over which would be three twelfths. Now twelve twelfths is the same as one whole so that's going to give me five plus one plus three twelfths which is going to equal six and three twelfths. Okay? All right, now I'm going to try. Now I'm going to show you the arrow strategy. Remember, you do not have to do both of these strategies. You're only doing the strategy that you like best. So I've got 3 and 8 twelfths plus 2 and 7 twelfths. So I'm going to add together the whole numbers, but I'm not going to add the fractions. All right, so now I'm going to have 5 and 8 twelfths, and I'm trying to get to 6. So that would give me 4 twelfths. So when I come up here I've got four twelfths and I would be left with three twelfths. So that's what I'm going to add to six. I'm going to add three twelfths. So I get six and three twelfths. So you can see I got the same answer. You have to decide for yourself which of these strategies makes the most sense to you and which do you feel the most proficient at using. Okay? Now on your exit slip it may ask you to use one method or the other. So if it asks you to use a method, then you're going to have to use that one. But if it tells you to use whichever method you prefer, pick the one that makes the most sense to you. That's what I would do.